Lord, we pray that that day will be today for somebody in this house, that they'll meet you. Amen. We thank you and praise you for the cross of Calvary that makes salvation possible. Hallelujah. You are worthy of, of our praise today.
give you praise this morning, Lamb of God. We worship you. We thank you. We thank you for what you have done for us. Hallelujah. Worship with the choir this morning.
Amen. We can rejoice and know that we belong to the Master and that we belong to Him. Philippians 4, starting verse 4. And I'm going to read a couple verses past that because we like to read verse 4, but we don't keep reading sometimes. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Verse 5 says, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. How many knows that's the case today? The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Well, why, why, why do you read that to us this morning? I'm going to be honest with you. Over the last month, we've had things that can trouble our minds. We've had decisions that have been made. We've seen things that's happened in this world that troubles our minds. But the Bible says for us not to worry about anything. What are we supposed to think about? Are we supposed to dwell on the things that's happened over the last month? Paul tells us to, 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 to think on these things. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. And if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Well, what's it going to do for me? It's going to change your outlook. It's going to change the, the expression on your face because sometimes we can walk around and things that happen in this world can trouble us. But when we start thinking upon the things that Paul tells us to think about, it changes our outlook not only on where we're going because I'm not, I don't know about anybody else in this building, but I'm not a citizen of this world, but I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm not looking to be here long because I'm looking to be with him. Is anybody with me this morning? I'm looking to be with him because he's coming soon. <laughs> I was reading this week up in Genesis about the occurrences that were going on in chapters 2 and 3 and 4 of Genesis. And the things that were going awry and things that were happening, the evil that was spreading across the earth. And I saw a picture of today. How much longer can God wait? Before he says, son, go get my children. <laughs> How much longer before he says, just go get them. <laughs> I'm ready for them to be with me. So go get them. I want you to stand with me. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. I, I feel the presence of God in this place. Mm. <laughs> because I'm going to reiterate something Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. The Lord is at hand. Sunday night we were given a challenge to make sure that we were right with God and I'm going to reissue that challenge this morning right now if you don't know the Lord is your personal Savior I ask that during this prayer that you either make it right at your seat or I even ask you as we start to pray make your way to the altar and somebody will meet you to pray with you because that's how desperate we are right now that's the times we live in. You've got to make sure you're ready to meet Jesus. There will be names on the screen behind me that we need to pray about. We need to continue to remember Joshua and Madeline Strickland as they're teaching in China that the Lord will protect them. We need to remember the Johnny Whitmore family today. Brother Johnny passed late last night. We need to remember this family. Also need to remember Sister Culpepper today. If there's anybody else today that has a need, would you lift your hand? I have a need, I have a need, I have a need. I have a second question I usually don't ask, but I just feel impressed to do that this morning. If you have a lost loved one today you want us to help you pray about, just lift your hand, I have a lost loved one. Hands all over the building. Ooh, thank you, Jesus.
you have the word from the Lord, speak it now. For I said from the very beginning that these things must come to pass before the end shall come. For I am yet at the door, saith the Lord, I am yet nigh unto thee. Seek me while you can find me. Seek me while I am available to you, saith the Lord, for my return is at hand. Be ready, saith the Lord, for I am vigilantly at the door. Be ready, saith the Lord. we go to the Lord in prayer today again if there's any question in your mind I'm going to ask you to make that right right now let's go to him right now Father we come before you we honor your presence we honor your word <laughs> Lord the spirit has just spoken to us that your coming is imminent that we are to make sure that things are ready in our lives today that nothing stands in the way if you were to come today Father I pray for every individual that's in this room today Lord I would be naive to think that everybody in this building was right with you and they had a relationship with you and Father I pray right now that as your spirit is moving that you would even draw and convict even as we're praying this prayer father I pray if there's one that's sitting within the sound of my voice and they don't have a relationship with you they've never given their life to you Lord they're not living a life that's dedicated and pursuing you I pray that right now Lord that you would convict them and draw them to this altar of prayer Lord, because we need you this day and this hour. We need you because as your spirit and your word says, your coming is at hand. And Lord, I plead right now with you in the name of Jesus that you would reach down and that you would search the hearts and lives of each individual. And Father, if there's any question in their mind, I pray, God, that you would let them sense a need to call upon you father as we lifted hands for those that have lost loved ones Lord hands went up across this building father there were numerous hands that went up and said I have lost loved ones Lord whether they're children mothers fathers aunts uncles grandparents Lord whatever they are I pray that you would reach down and let them have an opportunity to hear the message of Jesus Christ Lord I pray that we would be able to lead our own families to you Lord I don't want any to perish Lord I don't want any of my family to be lost Lord I don't want any of my church family to be lost Lord, I don't want any one of the members of the city of Woodruff to be lost. Lord, I don't want anybody within the Spartanburg County to be lost. Lord, I don't want anyone in the state of South Carolina to be lost. Lord, I don't want anybody within the borders of this great United States to be lost. Or in this world to be lost. Father, I pray, let your words be heard and responded to this morning. Lord, I pray for every member of this congregation. Let them see themselves in your mirror today and make the adjustments they need today. 
In your name we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen. So good to have you this morning in the house of God. So good that you chose to be here today to worship the Master. The one that can change your life and change your direction. If you're visiting with us today, can I, can I just see your hand? I'm visiting with you today. We have some information we'd like to get to. Anybody visiting with us today? Right back here. Good to have you with us today. Anybody else visiting with us today? So good to have you with us. Can we take a moment or two to welcome our guests, but also to welcome everybody that's around us today?
know, I'm convinced we can do a lot of good things even on Sunday and fail to do one of the most important things and that's to tell the Lord we love Him. Surely our expressions let Him know we love Him, but there's nothing that ever substitute for those words. I love you. I hope you love the Lord today. I said I hope you love the Lord today. And if you don't love Him, maybe you'll love Him before you leave. Maybe something will make a difference today. And you will love Him today. I want to tell you, He loves you. I'm absolutely convinced. He loves with everything within Him. He loves you. Thank you for being with us today. For those that are our guests today, we're so honored to have you with us. We hope that you'll feel a warm welcome. And most of all, you'll feel the warmth and presence of His Spirit today. And that through that you'll want to come back and be with us again. We're looking forward to that. that you'll return and come back and be with us again. Make sure you get a news and highlights. It's out there in the lobby. It's just some information uh, telling you some things that's going on this week in our, in our church. Uh, things that we do on Monday we pray right here in this room, 7 o'clock Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock back in the old part of the building downstairs in our prayer center. We pray there on Wednesday morning. There are opportunities for other things that take place this week and we'd love for you to to know about those things put them on your calendar be part of that it's so important that we join together and do things together there are also other things out there for you there are devotional books out there you can take all kind of things out there that you can use uh, to help you in your daily walk with the lord and we hope that you'll take advantage of all of those things today our wrestlers are going to come and wait upon us today we have an opportunity to give our gifts to the lord it is just a simple way first of all our tithe we we honor God by giving back to Him. And then offerings are the part that comes out of our portion that we give back to, to the Lord and we say to Him, Lord, we, we love You, we thank You, and Lord, we support the, the work that's going on in the house of God. We're grateful for that. So we're just asking you today to join with us as we give gifts to the Lord and bless Him. I hope that you're ready to join with me today as we give. Father God, thank You for all of Your many blessings. Thank You for all that You do. Lord, we can ever thank you or praise you enough. I say that every time that I get up to receive the offering of any kind. Because, Lord, it's true. We can never thank you. We can never praise you. Because you've blessed us in so many ways. And surely, Lord, we want to give back to you. We want to honor you with our tithe. And then out of our portion, we give other gifts to support the work of God. If it were not for the work that people do in giving and blessing and, 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 and sharing the load. Lord, we could not do what we do. I'm going to even mention one thing during the sermon today, God, that is being done. And Lord, if it were not for the, the goodness of people taking the blessing of God and turning around and sharing, Lord, with others, we would not be able to do what we do. So I ask today that, Lord, you'll touch and minister, Lord, to us. And that, God, you'll bless the gifts as they're given. Receive them, multiply them, help them to be everything they need to be. And we will bless and praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. What have you done to deserve all this? Curse God and die. What advice for a man who had trusted God most of his life? Then Job speaks as he stands above the broken down domain. In the midst of it all, I shall stand and not fall and bless his name. In the midst of it all in the midst of 
right again.
forgot to type it in my notes, and so I scribbled it on the paper, and I did not have the gift of interpretation. As I was trying to read my own writing, I apologize for that. A uh, song came back to me as I was studying for the message today. You know, there, there's something that happens when you... Uh, when I used to do uh, the music here, because I played it and I saw it with my eyes, I could remember, I could tell you what, I couldn't always remember the name of the book, but I could tell you what color it was and I could tell you what was on the front of the page of, of that book and I could tell you what key we did it in and, and I could tell you all of that, but, but now that I'm not involved in it, I, I don't see the music, I don't, I don't, I don't play it. And so I can always remember a lot of the stuff that we do now. And a lot of times the older songs, because I played them or I sang them or I led them, come to me when I'm doing study. And, uh, and that kind of happened to me as I was studying for today. I want you to turn me this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I want to read the first seven verses together and I guess verse 7 probably is that place that um, will help us with what we're doing today or what I'm talking about today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Thank you to all of those that were so helpful while my wife and I were gone. To those that uh, preached the services, Pastor Sheila last Sunday night, the Buster Ball. Wednesday night, I'm appreciative of that. Pastor Jason and the staff and all that helped through the week, I'm very grateful for their service and for their help this week. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning of verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The Message Bible reads it like this of verse 7. If you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in the unadored clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. Have you ever wondered what's going on in this world? Have you ever wondered with all of the things that are happening how anybody could not understand and see that Jesus Christ coming is at hand. Could, can you not see and understand how that it appears that people are so blinded to the truth of the gospel and yet this scripture tells us exactly what happens. The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. He puts blinders on their eyes so that the illumination of Christ is not visible to them because the truth seems to be hidden to them. Now I understand that that is what happens. Satan blinds the eyes. But I want to tell you what else I think happens. I think a lot of times people who know Jesus don't let their light shine like they should. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject. Hey, what's in your container? It said, we are earthen vessels. The message rendered it like this. We carry around the message in unadorned clay pots 
of our ordinary life. Wednesday night I had a dream. It's my dream, so don't complain about the dream. I don't remember all about the dream. I don't remember what led up to what I could remember. But in my dream, there was a, a picture that was sitting on a counter. I could not see anyone, but I heard a voice say to me that there was something wrong with the container. And there was something wrong with the contents of the container. I woke up, and it was very vivid. I could remember it. I knew that I needed to rehearse it over and over and over and over and over and over because if I didn't, I would not remember. And so on Thursday morning, <coughs> I sat in a room by myself, and I asked the Lord three questions. What does this mean? Number two, what is wrong with the container? Number three, what was in the container? And the Lord almost immediately gave me three things that were wrong with. He never told me what was in it. But he told me three things that were wrong with the container. Now you've got to understand, in, in, in this dream, I did know what was in it. The Lord didn't tell me what was supposed to be in it. In, in my dream, my container had coffee in it. It's my dream. There were three things the Lord said was wrong with this container. Number one, the aroma could not be smelled. And the reason why my container had a lid on it. The aroma could not be smelled. Number two, the contents could not be seen. This picture that, that this content was in was not a clear picture. It, it was like a Tupperware picture. Thirdly, the contents could not be easily poured out. My intent this morning was to have two pitchers on each side of me one a glass pitcher that's very clear that you could see and the contents to give the appearance as if it were coffee and then my other picture was to be a Tupperware pitcher that you could not see through with a top on it and and I was going to tell you coffee was in it and you just had to take me at my word you see the first problem is is that if that container sure enough did have coffee in it if you have a top on the container, you cannot smell the aroma. You see, if the proper, if the container is not correct, then the aroma from the inside cannot get to the outside. In other words, nobody could verify that what I was telling you was true. If you cannot smell the aroma that comes from it, you don't know if it's any count or not. How many of you ever do the smell test of milk? That's because we'd rather smell it bad than taste it bad. We need the aroma. Did you know that your life, my life as a believer, is supposed to be putting off an aroma that is conducive to the Lord Jesus Christ? We are to be a, a fragrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if our container says we contain Christ, but we put a lid on it so that the aroma, the fragrance... The, new, the King James uses the word savor in some places that, that they cannot smell, they cannot sense, they cannot get the fragrance of Christ Jesus from us, then we have a wrong container. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16 says, Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place. For we are under God a sweet savor under Christ, of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the ones we are the savor of death and under death. And to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? The New Living Translation says it like this. But thank God he hath made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal processions. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. To them who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. Who is adequate for such a task as this? 
We are to be a life-giving perfume. Everybody take a deep breath. Do you smell it? See, around you today are people who are full of this life-giving perfume perfume it is the fragrance of Christ Jesus it is the fragrance of the Savior who came from the Father above the same smell the same fragrance is what the world needs to smell it's not a literal smell it's not a literal thing where you all oh, you smell like a Christian it is talking about the evidentiary things that come from us so that people can understand the life giving aroma, just the essence of who Christ is that lives outside of us. If our container is not proper. People cannot get a hold of the aroma that people are supposed to smell today. People are supposed to perceive today. He said, I want to tell you, we need to be the fragrance of Christ to this world round about us. Students need to be it in school. People need to be it on their jobs. We need to be it in the grocery store. We went the other, other day and bought something I don't remember. And the lady counted out the change. Oh, I know it was. I was at the, the, the DMV here in, in Woodruff. And I was uh, paying a, a bill there. And the woman counted out the, the change to me and put it in my hand. And I didn't move my hand. I just left my hand right there. And she said, what's the problem? I said, uh, what did you tell me it was? And she said, oh, my goodness. And she... She jerked money out of my hand. She'd give me too much money. And she kept saying, you know what? That don't happen anymore. People aren't truthful anymore. Listen, I'm going to tell you, every born-again believer ought to be truthful. Every born-again believer ought to be the evidence of Christ Jesus, the aroma, the essence of who we are, he, who He is, ought to be coming from us. And if we have a lid on our container that they cannot smell it, cannot see it, cannot experience it, we've got the wrong container. Philippians chapter 4, verses 16 to 7 through 18 says, For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But if I have all and abound, I am full, having received of Ephroditus the things that were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. How many knows that? The essence of what we do is not always in just the words we say. But sometimes it's in the actions that we do. Paul here is referring to uh, people that sent him some gifts. He said, I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I don't do what I do and I don't say what I say because I'm looking for some gift. The, the greatest gift I could have is to see fruit coming from your life. But I want you to understand and know that the gifts that you sent and the gifts that I received have been like an odor, a sweet smell in the, in the nose of God. How many knows that sometimes what we do in actions are some of the greatest aroma of the love of God and the truth of Jesus that we could ever give anybody? We're doing something this summer that's new to us. We're trying to help some, some children who, who literally would be hungry this summer. We're calling it Feed the Future. Our kids, many of them are picked up on our vans and buses, come to this property many times hungry. I'm talking about physically hungry. Kids Cafe was kind of born out of that several years ago because it hurt them, the bus workers and, and the van drivers and others to understand and know that kids were coming here and they were hungry. Part of the reason we were having so much uh, discipline problems were because kids couldn't focus because their bellies hurt. And so Kids Cafe feeds them on Sunday morning and and on Wednesday night before, uh, before they go to class on Wednesday night. But the rest of the time, the kids are hungry. Well, how do you know? I attended a meeting at, at, this, at the off, district office here in Woodruff. And this was some statistics they gave, and I jotted them down on my phone. 83% of primary students in District 4 get free lunch. 70% of all students in District 4. And what that means is that they, they meet a criteria in which they are eligible for that 
program. Thank God for that. But what happens when school's out? They're eating a lunch every day. Do you know what? There are people in this church who have decided to partner together. And every Wednesday night, around 49 bags of food are distributed. Those kids take those bags home and they have food all week long. They have something for breakfast. It could be a pop tart. It could be a fruit bar. They have something for a snack. And they have something they can do for one other meal that day. For six days they have enough. And they bring the bag back and they, and they start over again. They get another bag. I want to tell you what. Some people like it. Some people don't. But I want to tell you what. We are to be the aroma of Jesus Christ. We are to be more than just words from our mouth. We are to be the evidence and the, and, the, and, and, and the fruit of what Lord Jesus Christ came to do. He came to be an expression of God the Father. He became to be a literal something you could see and look at and know what God was like. You can know the heart of God now that Jesus is gone. He has sent the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Jesus lives inside of us and now we are to become the representation of Jesus to this world. Yes, what we say is important, but what we do is also important. What, what is in your container? What kind of container is it? Not only did my container have a lid on it, which created that you could not smell the aroma. Here's a second problem. The contents often cannot be seen. The container that I saw on that counter was not a clear container. Although I was told it was coffee, I could not see it with my own eyes. And because the lid was on it, I could not smell it with my own eyes. How many times have people said to someone else, I'm a Christian, but just take my word for it. In other words, don't, don't, don't. Don't go by what I do. Don't, don't, go by, don't go by any other thing you may see or hear from me. You just take my word for it that I am a Christian. Brother Terry, you're judging. No, I'm, I'm just going by what the word declares. That there are certain behaviors that we once did before we knew Jesus and that after we come to know Jesus, those behaviors change. We are not what we used to be. We are now a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. If you have Christ, then let people see Christ in you. If your container's cloudy, it's time to change containers. If your container is not visibly so that people can look through and see Jesus in you. See, this is what's confusing. This week, I saw on Facebook where somebody was talking about how this country was founded. They talked about God in the Bible. They talked about how abortion has ruined this country. And then the rest of their comments were filled with all kinds of words that I'd have to beep, 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 beep if I were to quote them to you today. God wants our containers to be the kind of container that the aroma of the fragrance of the Lord can come out of and that the actual evidence of who we say lives in us is visible to this world. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your, your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Where do we learn about good works? How do we know that this is what we're supposed to be doing? Good works. Matthew chapter 11 verses 1 through 3. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. When Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John, this is John the Baptist, had heard in prison about the deeds of Christ. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was doing good deeds. He was doing good works. He was healing the blind and healing the deaf. He was healing the cripple. He was changing people's lives. When John the Baptist heard about the deeds of Christ, he sent word to his disciples and said, Ask him, are you the one that is to come or do we look for another? John the Baptist heard about the deeds, the works of Christ. I want people to hear about the works. And the deeds of Christ. 
I want, I want people, when they talk about Woodyard Church of God, I want them to be able to talk about the deeds and the works of Christ. I want them to talk about the fact that we take care of the fatherless. We take care of those that are less fortunate. I want them to talk about the fact that we feed children. I want them to talk about the care and the concern that we have for people. Listen, we need to let the aroma of Jesus flow and we need our container to be visible so people can see the Jesus who is in in us Paul said in Romans chapter 12 verses 19 to 21 I'm reading from the New Living Translation dear friends never take revenge I'll finish it you know what I've heard people say in the last week or so I'm about to lose my religion Who in their right mind, who is a true Christian, would ever say, I'm about to lose my religion? Do you not know what you have? Do you not know the price Jesus paid so you could have what you call religion? Do you not understand he left the splendor of heaven? Do you understand that he came to a place where his own people would not receive him? Do you not know the price he paid? Do you not know how he suffered, bled, and died for you? Why would we say I'm about to lose my religion? You know why people say it? Because they want to hide their religion in a a vessel that nobody knows who they are so they can give people a piece of their mind, use some words that they had used since grade school. I want to tell you the word says, don't take revenge. You know what Paul said? Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to take care of those who are doing the things that we don't like and are are causing things to look wrong. Let me handle that. But this is what I want you to do. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. And if, if they're thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you're heaping burning coals of shame on their head. See, we think if we give them a piece of our mind and we use some of our schoolyard language and we lose our religion, we'll feel better. You might feel better for a moment, but what you've done is you've created in them something. If that's what church is like, I don't want any part of it. God says, let me handle the vengeance. What I want you to do is let the aroma come from you. What I want you to do is to allow what's in you to be visible to everybody. What I want you to do is in the face of your enemies, if they're hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. And You want to know why he was concerned? This is what he said. Don't let evil conquer you. See, what we think we're going to do for one moment has a tendency to put its claws into us and hold us hostage. You'll never convince me that there's an alcoholic who never thought they'll take just one drink. There are not many drug addicts who will tell you that they thought they would just try it one time. I want to tell you, a lot of things happen because you did it just one time. There are a lot of young girls who got pregnant because they only had intimacy one time. God says, don't let evil conquer you but you conquer evil how by giving it a piece of your mind by losing your religion conquer evil by doing good my picture had a cover on it so you could not smell the aroma it was not clear so that people could not easily see what was in it Lastly picture that that I had didn't have a spout which meant you could not as easily pour the contents out when you're pouring stuff especially if it's hot you don't want it going everywhere you want it guided to just the right place have you ever noticed that if you try to pour coffee from one coffee cup to another it's hard it doesn't pour straight out it runs down the cup and goes up your arm It's because coffee cups were meant to be sipped or slurped, wherever you're from. 
in the case of my granddaddy and my uncle, they always had coffee in a saucer. And they would tip the cup over and fill the saucer because it cooled. And then they'd pick the saucer up. <laughs> or they'd take a little biscuit, break it off in the cup, have a little soaky. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And take the spoon and, and get the coffee out of the biscuit part they were eating as well. So you got to understand that, that there are certain kinds of vessels that are easily more able to pour in a directed way because of a spout, because of some system that allows the, 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 the pouring out to be directed. We can put it where we want it and we don't lose any and we don't make a mess. The problem with a lot of people today who have the vessels that are not proper containers and they're trying to pour it and it's going everywhere and it's making a mess and sometimes it's even burning them. You want to know why? Sometimes people are trying to pour out of a vessel that is not a proper vessel. You try to pour out spiritual things out of a vessel that has not been properly sanctified. It has not been properly prepared. It has not been properly shaped and formed to meet the need. What it does is often creates problem for us. It creates an issue for us. There are people who are not allowing themselves to be formed and contoured to the very image of Christ Jesus. If somehow we would allow the Lord to contour us to Himself, if we would allow Him to make us that spout so that the glory can come out, we can direct it where it needs to go and the people that need to be hit with that glory can be hit with the glorious power and the presence of a mighty God. But instead of pouring out, we often spew off we don't control our tongues words go everywhere and they end up creating a mess rather than helping us at all I like what Paul told the Romans, Romans chapter 12 verse 2 be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind one translation says don't let yourself be poured into the world's mold, allow the Lord to mold you Allow the Lord to pour Himself into you and then make sure your vessel is a vessel that you can be used to pour out to others. I've seen some vessels that have been broken. Matter of fact, I broke a coffee mug this week. I worried all week how much that was going to cost me. I had it in my left hand. I'm not left-handed. I don't drink out of my left hand. But Where we were staying under this sink, their trash can was a five-gallon bucket with a trash bag in it. And it didn't hold a lot of, a lot of trash. And, and so I was trying to turn the bucket and hold the cup and take trash out of my hand. And somehow inadvertently I just dropped this white coffee mug. And it broke into a lot of pieces and... And I picked up what I could pick up. And do you know what I did with it? I threw it away. And all of a sudden, Jeremiah 18 came back to me. Listen to this. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house and I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made was clay. And it was marred in his hand of the potter and he made it again another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make it. Now, if you just read that, you think, you know, he just went down and watched a man do a little, little, make a little pottery. But you understand, he was sent down for a reason. Because the Lord wanted this to be an example, or, 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 or yeah, an example of what was going to happen to Israel. That they were literally in the potter's hand, and, and that the potter has the power to destroy it, or the potter has the power to make it become what it needs to become. I want to tell you this morning, the potter still has the power to either help us or to or to turn us loose and, and let us go our own way. And if we go our own way, we're going to become marred and we're going to become perplexed and troubled. The word vessel here means container. It could be a bowl or a jar or a pot. The word marred means disfigured or ruined. 
But here's a part of the definition I've never seen. It means to act corruptly. Did you know my grandmother used to have these uh, uh, tea, tea pitchers, you know, for hot tea. In, in the, the day and time we grew up, my, my grandmother had these, it's, it's that white and blue pattern. They call it like, what is it, Martha and George Washington, that kind of thing. And, you know, you have to be very careful with the top because it'll break. And you have to be careful with the, the spout, it'll break. And there were times when the spout would get chipped. And when it would get chipped, it wouldn't pour right. And there were times that it would get split and, and things would come out where it wasn't supposed to come out. And it just created a problem. In other words, it, 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 was, it was corrupted. It was disfigured. It was, it was ruined. It's possible that many times we, we are trying our best to, 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 to pour out when the truth is we've been marred, we've been disfigured, we've been ruined. We've allowed it to happen to our own self. Sometimes we did it to our own self. I was trying to think of that song that we used to sing, but he didn't throw the clay away. See, I, I'm, I'm glad I did a little study and I, I found out that, that even potters today don't throw away broken pottery. I, I, I mean, I just it's, I had to hunt a trash can to put it in because the one in the kitchen was full. And so I went all over the place finding somewhere I could throw away this broken mug. But do you know what I discovered? That potters today will literally take fired pieces of broken clay and they'll mix it after they grind it with plastic clay so to give it more strength and stability. They'll literally take the pieces of broken pottery and make a mosaic out of it. They'll take the broken pieces of pottery and use it to rub or burnish the clay to make it shine without even having to use glaze. What I'm telling you is, is that sometimes when the world tries to tell us that we're broken and we're no good and that what we need to do is just throw you away, the Lord is saying, don't let anybody throw you away. Don't you throw yourself away. God did not create an earthen vessel just for us to be of no use or little use or to be convinced that just because we're broken we are no longer usable to God. Hear me this morning. The potter is still in business. And what he wants to do is he wants to take every broken pot and mend it and make it something usable to him. I didn't say you had to go get permission from somebody else to be used. I didn't say that you had to go somewhere else and somebody said, God will never use you. I didn't say anything about finding out what they thought about it. I'm telling you, talk to the potter. and Find out what the potter will do for you. You know what I believe the potter saying this morning? I believe the potter saying this morning, I made you and crafted you just the way I wanted. Some of you have tried to change your container. See, I didn't make you to, to have me in you, but to be in a container where nobody can see you. I really didn't make your container for you to put a lid on it so nobody can find out the expressions of the life-changing aroma that comes through Christ. I didn't, I didn't put you in a pot that has no spout, that has no funnel, that has, has no, 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 no place that can direct what's happening so that you end up making a mess or even hurting your own self. It's not how I made you. The Lord is saying today is, I want you to find out what it is that I made you to be. Quit trying to change what I made you to be. See, we... we we get in a dangerous place when we think we're supposed to be like somebody else. Now, I, want to, I may want to pattern my life after them. I may want to learn the lessons that they have. I know Paul said, if you want to know how to live for Christ, follow me. Be an imitator of me. But do you understand, I can never be Paul the Apostle. I wasn't born with the same DNA he was born with. I didn't go through the same struggles he went through. I wasn't beaten 
beaten with rods. And I wasn't beaten with cat of nine times. I wasn't stoned and left for dead. I can never be Paul the Apostle. One of the greatest struggles I had as a young minister was every time camp meeting would come along, you'd watch some man preach for six or seven days. I'd pick up their habits. Orville the Hagen used to preach with his hand in his pocket like that. I thought that was so cool. Problem was, I could never get my hand out of my pocket. It created problems for me. I remember another man, he had a little uh, slender uh, New Testament. It was very small, but he carried it with him when he preached. He'd read his text out of the big Bible, and then he'd carry this other Bible around. He'd preach. I thought that was so cool, I got me one. I used to think if my voice sounded like Jeff Burrell. Jeff Burrell's voice was gravelly because he had had tumors in his throat. The Lord healed him. See, I could never be that. I had to understand that God made this earthen vessel. You think I'm lying to you, but this is the truth. There are times when I have to get out my own billfold and look at my own driver's license and remind myself what my name is. Because He didn't call me to be like that, like this be somebody else. God called me to be me. God called you to be you. Now the problem is, is that oftentimes we mess with our vessel. It's not what God's done to it. It's what we did to it. We're so afraid something's going to get in, we put a cover on it. It's not what we ought to be afraid of getting in. It's that we're keeping out what should be getting out. It's not the way He meant for it to be. I, I, you know, if light gets to it, it, light will change the content. No, we need the light in. We need the, we need the light of the gospel in. We need the light of Jesus in. We need the illumination of the Holy Ghost in so that people can see what's in us. Don't go changing your earthen vessel. Be who God intended you to be. And you may be here today and you say, you know what? I'm all broke up. I'm not useful to anybody. You don't know the potter I know. You don't know the potter I know. He may pick up the broken pieces and put it back together, or he may put it in such a form and fashion that it is more beautiful now than it's ever been. Did you know that archaeologists, when they find an intact piece, consider it to be extraordinary? But even if it's a broken piece and it's extremely old, it's just as valuable as a whole pocket. What I'm telling you is, in God's eyes, you may be broken. But in His eyes, you're as valuable as you've ever been before. And you'll be more valuable if you allow Him to take the pieces and put you back together again. See, if you don't know Jesus, you're broken up. You wonder why nobody ever picks you up. It's because the handle's been broken off. But if you let the Lord put you back on the wheel and make you, He'll put a handle on you where He can put His hand on you and He'll be the one controlling your vessel. you got a top on. It's like, you know, I'm just empty. I'm empty and I can't get anything in. It's because you got a top on. Let the potter take the top off and pour Himself into you. I feel kind of stagnant. You know what? If you take what God's given you and you aren't pouring out so He can put fresh in, you are stagnant. If you're hoarding what God's given you and you aren't allowing what's in you to come out of you, you are stagnant. We weren't created for that. We're created to take in and pour out, take in and pour out, take in and pour out. I'm telling you, God wants to do a work this morning. God wants to take broken pots and put them back together again. God wants to take pots that have been made something they weren't supposed to be and turn them back into what He made them to be. He's ready to put handles back on and remove tops and, and, and fix spouts or whatever He has to do. He's so ready to do it today. If we'll just let Him all over the building stand, would you? Father God, I'll bring this congregation to you today. Thanking you, Lord, that you have created us for a specific purpose. You have not created us to sit. You have created us to become 
Lord, a, an earthen vessel that has inside of it the glorious message of Christ. There are many empty pots today because they've never allowed Christ Jesus to come into their life. Today, God, I pray you'll move tops off pots and that people that need Jesus will receive it. Or maybe, Lord, we put tops on our pots because we're afraid of what might get in. But what we didn't realize is we now can't let anything out. There's no aroma getting out. There's no life-changing, stylistic opportunity for anybody to see the life change that can come in Christ. We've transferred our stuff from one pot to another because we didn't want the light to get to it, to alter it. But what's happened is nobody can see what's in us. We've become hidden to a world that needs to see the contents of Christ in us. God, I pray today that you'll make a life change in somebody's life. God, I just really feel strong that they're broken pots today. They've almost felt like they're no count. They just need to be thrown away. But the Holy Ghost is saying today, the potter is still open for business. And he'll take the broken pieces and mend it and make it whole today. In the name of Jesus. They're going to sing. And as they sing, I invite you to come. If you need any kind of prayer in any one of those places today, I'm begging you, I'm inviting you to come and receive Jesus. Everybody's happy with their pot, their container today. Your container's clear. Your container's spout is proper. There is no top on your container at all. today. Any, any fracture, any pots with cracks and you're worried about the content seeping out. Anybody today, you feel like, you know what, I, I don't really feel like I'm good for much, but to be just tossed aside. But today, I trust the potter. Anybody? Father God, I thank you today. I thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the many times that you give us examples that help us to better relate so that the truth of a message can go forward. And in the event, Lord, there's someone here today who feels like a broken pot. I don't know why I feel that so strong today, but Lord, I do. Should there be someone here today who feels like a broken pot? Help them to understand and know, Lord, that the master pot specializes in restorations. He, rest, he specializes in putting back together again and restoring or taking the pieces and fashioning something even more beautiful than what it originally was. God, help us to understand that you are the one. We can't do it. We can't fix it. We can't put it back together. We can't remedy it on our own. It takes, Lord, you to do that work today. 
And I pray today, Lord, that your word would just penetrate us today. That it will stay in our hearts and minds. And that, Lord, if there are things in our life, areas that we need to, to attend to, that God will take the word and allow it to work so that we can be the fragrance we need to be. We can be visible to the world that they need to see the, the, the love of Christ and that we are a vessel that is able to pour out what is in us to a world round about us. Touch us today, God, and we'll give you praise and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Don't forget us tonight. Another great service tonight. We're looking forward to a great time together.